Hi everyone, Nurse Mel here. Hope you're having a great day despite everything that's going on around us. Today's video will be dedicated to a COVID-19 update as well as some things I want to share with you about our immunity, about social distancing, and some other things I've been updated about during my meetings at the hospital regarding COVID-19 and everything surrounding it. Do not take any advice from someone who's not a healthcare professional, someone who's not in infectious disease control, and someone that's not from the government. Please, there is so much bogus being shared at this point, and we are trying our best as healthcare professionals to set the record straight. So don't make our work harder than it already is and just get your information straight from the source. Share things that are only source based from healthcare professionals and from the government. So first things first, a lot has happened in the span of one week since I released my first COVID-19 video. So update number one, do not go to the hospital if you are sick and do not call 811 if you are having symptoms because the line is completely ambushed with calls. So Quebec has now enlisted a line, it's a hotline for COVID-19. The number is 1-877-644-4545. If you are having sudden symptoms, you are having shortness of breath, if you have a dry cough, if you have a runny nose, if you suddenly have mucus coming out of your throat, if you have a fever, please call this hotline. Ask for what the protocol is. Typically, what I have heard of is that if you have these symptoms and they, not go, and they do not lessen within a few days, you will be asked to go get tested and screened at one of the organized sites that they have now put in place. I want to give a big shout out to all of my colleagues and nurses and doctors that I'm working with. We are going every day and sacrificing ourselves to ensure that we are still taking care of other patients that are in the hospital because it's not just COVID-19. Life is still going on. We have people coming in with strokes, people coming in with heart attacks, people coming in with uh, respiratory distress, pneumonia. And on my floor, it's, it's oncology, it's cancer care, and it's still going on and we still need to go in and take care of these people amongst being prepared for the worst in case we have an outbreak in one of our hospitals of COVID-19. Also, a big shout out to everyone working in the pharmacies, in the grocery stores, people working in, our airline, in the airlines. You're putting yourself at risk every single day to ensure that the safety of others is still being complied with. So thank you for all of your work. I want to ded dedicate a little portion of this segment to immunity. A lot of things are being pushed around about boosting the immune system and supporting our immune system. And I just want to get the facts straight of what exactly our immune system is, give you a little bit of knowledge of what it is and how to better understand it when people are speaking about it. So our immune system is, comp is comprised of multiple organs. We have lymph nodes, we have the spleen, we have our integumentary system, it's our skin, mucous membranes, white blood cells, our bone marrow and lymph vessels. So all of them work collectively together to make sure that we have a defense in place in case a microorganism is trying to invade our body. So our immune system is pretty magical in a sense that it is able to detect pathogens that are coming into our body, usually towards a portal of entry, so that's our nose, our lips, um, vaginal or penile entry, uh, our ears, our eyes, that sort of thing. Basically, it recognizes this pathogen and is able to attach cells to it to recognize it and destroy it. Amongst all this happening, we also have uh, memory cells, which are in place so that in case the virus tries to creep back into our system, we are able to recognize, say, wait, this already happened. We're not going to let it come back in. And it attaches itself and it disappears. Typically, in a very strong immune system, this is what occurs. So that we don't have flu-like symptoms, we don't have a cough, we don't have a cold, we don't have getting uh, uh, any viral infection. We need to understand so that we can better understand how COVID-19 is attacking itself. Our immune system might work like that. My immune system might work like that. I am surrounded by pathogens every single day at the hospital. So maybe I have a stronger immune system because over the months that I've been working, my memory cells have attached themselves to different pathogens and are able to detect and kill any type of virus that attempts to come into my body. However, I still have the viral load, which means that if I'm putting myself out into the public, I am still able to spread the virus to others without knowing that I even have it at all because I'm completely asymptomatic. So I'll give you an example. I work in the hospital. I may not know I have COVID-19. I may, I may not even know that I have the flu. I may not even know that I might have a cold coming up because my immune system is so strong that it's detecting it and it's already fighting it without even me having a symptom. I might even just have a dry cough and it might go away after a day. But that doesn't mean that it's simply not just a dry cough. It might be something a lot worse. That is why in a time like this, I am not going to see my grandparents. I'm actually isolating myself in my room as we speak. The only time I'm going out is to work, which I'm going directly to work. I'm not taking any public transportation, uh, directly to and back. I have a different uh, way of coming into the home. 
I have an area in the house where I am able to desanitize. I am not leaving my room unless it is to go get a little bit of vitamin D outside for a little bit of my own sanity. And even at that, I am making sure that I am keeping a distance around myself and I'm only doing it once a day and I'm not staying around my family. I am completely in self-isolation. Going back to the immune system. Our immune system and my immune system might be working like that. However, the geriatric population, immune suppressed people, cancer patients, their immune system is at an all time low. Their memory cells are not working as well. They have weakened. They do not have the proper antigens to fight and kill the type of virus that we can attack if it comes into our body. That is why it is important that during this time we remain selfless, we remain Together, we work collectively to protect these populations. If you are coming in via travels, you have arrived, you were in another country, you were in another state, you were in another province, please, we are begging you, after you get screened at the airport, because now that is stipulated in a place that if you come back uh, from out of Canada or out of the province, you will be screened. But please, follow the 14-day quarantine. This virus is very, very sneaky compared to any other virus that has presented itself in our... In history we need to think smart we need to critically think and so this is this is why the health um, the World Health Organization is telling everyone that 14 day quarantine is what ne what is needed because the virus can live within yourself for 14 days and not show any symptoms and after a 14 day intubation period boom symptoms are going to occur and that is why in 14 days we will have accurate numbers of how COVID-19 has attacked our people here in Canada now I'm gonna be honest I don't entirely believe in boosting an immunity with a, a certain supplement. I believe in balance. I believe in the yin and the yang. I believe in healthy eating and eating a lot of leafy greens and a lot of lean protein. I believe in exercising uh, weekly. However, when it comes to vitamins and supplements, a lot of them are not FDA approved. And I know now everyone's going vitamin crazy. I will share with you with some of the things that I've been taking uh, lately because every time I am worried about my immune system going down. I do take these things just to help support my immune system, but I don't believe that it is necessarily boosting my immune system just because there's a lot of organs in place for that, and I don't think that taking one tablet a day is necessarily going to boost it completely up. With that being said, I take emergency during this time. It's 1,000 milligrams. I put it in my water, and it's basically just to support my immune system. I take it before I go to work. Does it work? I am not 100% sure. I'm not a pharmacist and I don't work necessarily with vitamins and dietitians. However, I take it in moments where my immune system may need just need a little bit more support. Is it boosting it? No. And I also take uh, vitamin B12 to support energy levels because I am working at a fast-paced job. Um, I work 12, 16-hour shifts sometimes. I work nights, days, evenings on rotation. And I don't have a lot of a lot of time to sleep and rest. So sometimes I just take one of these to give myself a little bit of um, energy support. If we're living in Canada, if we're living in the States, if we're living in Europe, these are countries which um, generally you get all of your vitamins uh, daily just from eating the foods that we eat. And even if you're not eating so healthy, you're taking actually in the appropriate amount of vitamins that you need for your daily intake. This really is meant just to support your immune system uh, during a time where it may be depleted and even at, uh, even at that, if you're generally considered healthy, you don't necessarily need additional vitamins. Social distancing means that you are not leaving the house unless it is for grocery shopping and emergency situations where you need to get a medication, where you, are, uh, where you just need to stock up on food, toilet paper, things like that. I am not recommending anyone to be going any anymore to each other's homes. The thing is that we need to understand is that although you may have seen this person within the same week and you think it's okay to go to each other's homes and watch a movie, I understand why you may think that's okay, but I'm going to explain to you now why it's not. Let's just say you today have to go to work. You have no choice. Your business has not closed. So you're going to work and you met someone, even though keeping a meter away in proximity, they have a virus. The droplets can trans, uh, transmit themselves to you. So now you may be touched now with this virus. You are going back home. You are not just spreading now this little virus that you picked up. You are going out to someone else's home and bringing that virus to them. At this point, I am pushing everyone not to go to anyone's homes. Stay put. Self-isolate yourself. I know it is difficult. I know we're on the go society, but please, it is not like we're asking you to go to war and fight for your country. We're asking you to stay on the couch yourself 
entertain yourself, play a board game, read a book, self-educate yourself about things that you don't usually have the time to do, work on those projects that you never had the time to do, work on skincare, simple things that you could start putting in place. And also, FaceTime is a great way to still stay connected and not self-completely mentally isolate yourself. My friends and I last night, we were 10 of us, we were on FaceTime, and that's how we were uh, staying in communication and still verbalizing and socializing with each other while still conforming with um, self uh, social distancing. And for me, it's quarantine and self-isolation as a healthcare professional. And I have to thank everyone that is putting them, that is complying with this because I know it's difficult. I'm not saying that it's easy, but there's a lot of worse things that could have been put onto us and we just need to continue going through with this quarantine and social distancing until government tells us otherwise. Um, a lot of questions I've been getting the last couple of days is that I put out a post a couple of days ago saying that I chose to self-quarantine myself when I'm not at the hospital. And this is going beyond social distancing. It is all, it's meaning that I am not leaving my house to the grocery stores. I'm not leaving my house to go to the pharmacy. I am staying in my house. I'm doing one walk a day just to get a little bit of vitamin D. But that is it. And I am doing this because I work with cancer patients. Cancer patients have immune suppressed systems. They take a lot of corticosteroids, which also brings down their system. So I am not just thinking of myself. I'm thinking of the people that I love so much and that I go in every day to take care of. I cannot put them at risk in case that I am carrying a little tiny bit of the virus. God forbid it gets to them. It's not good. If we all do our job as a society and we collectively work together through this global pandemic, we will see brighter days. We will see a better tomorrow. We are taking care of Mother Earth as we speak and something good and beautiful will come out of this, I can assure everyone. But it will get worse before it gets better. I know that is intimidating to hear, but it is the truth and I am here to spread the truth and not sugarcoat anything. Um, I am a nurse. I wash my hands about 300 times a day. That is no exaggeration. Um, my hands get very dry and so cracks can happen and that is a great portal of entry for bacteria. So something great that I use after hand washing or using the um, antimicrobial soap or the alcohol wipes. I use uh, Vaseline's clinical care. This moisturizes uh, my skin and it's a great rescue for my dry skin in general. I've been doing this way before COVID-19. Hand washing also existed way before COVID-19, but we need to be pressing it onto people more than ever now because of the high spread that this, this virus has on everyone. So everyone, please stay healthy, stay safe during this time, be with the ones you love the most, and stay healthy. Talk to you soon.